A couple of weeks ago, I asked if Oregon can beat a championship level defense. The addition of Derek Harmon may certainly get them to that level. But how about another question? Does the addition of Derek Harmon make them the best defensive line in the Big Ten Conference? From L.A. to Piscataway, all Big Ten, all year long. This is Big Ten Ten. Before I get into Oregon, and there's going to be plenty of talk about the Ducks in this one, I want to first talk about Michigan State. I would be remiss if I don't mention how big of a loss Derek Harmon is, how big of a loss Simeon Barrow is, who transferred over to Miami. I think Michigan State has maybe gone from a surprise team. Maybe they could win eight games and take a big jump up in year number one under Jonathan Smith. Now I think they go to a rebuild type of situation. We know Jonathan Smith can certainly build up a program in a couple of years. So I have confidence that he's going to be able to do that. But man, have they taken some gut punches, specifically here in the spring portal period. When you lose two stud defensive tackles and you lose them to NIL factories like Miami and Oregon, it just tells you how valued those players were. And not only them, but there's been a lot of impact players, 37 players overall in the winter and in the spring, have entered the portal for the Michigan State Spartans. Let's get to the Oregon Ducks, though. That's what everybody came here to see. Let's talk Derek Harmon. What is Oregon getting with Derek Harmon? This is a guy that can use his power. This is a guy that can use his leverage to push back the offensive line at that anchor spot in the middle. And Derek Harmon is a big boy. Nope, he is a extremely big man in the middle. Six foot five, 320 pounds. And not only is he big, but he is very nimble and he is very agile with that size as well, with which makes him extremely dangerous. One of the first thoughts that popped into my head when I saw that Harmon was indeed landing at Oregon is it's going to be extremely tough to run the football against this Ducks front. And running the football is extremely important to success in the Big Ten Conference. I always, my eyes, every single week, they look at Oregon's schedule, they look at the Big Ten schedule, and they see October 12th, They see Ohio State, and when you think of what Ohio State is going to be in 2024, you think of Trevion Henderson. You think of Quinshawn Judkins. You think of Will Howard running the football. You know the way Chip Kelly likes his design, his offense, and maybe favoring the run game a little bit. Oregon is certainly pushing back in that October 12th matchup with the addition of Derek Harmon on this defensive front. The irresistible force and the immovable object, Derek Harmon may be that immovable object for a lot of Big Ten offensive lines this season. When you look at this addition, you got to look at it outside of just in a phone booth, and you got to look at how Harmon plugs into the rest of this defense, specifically up front on this defensive line. Here, I want to pull up a tweet from Max Torres of Scoop Duck, the Oregon on three site. They do a great job. Him and Justin Hopkins do a great job over there at Scoop Duck. You look at Jamari Caldwell and Derek Harmon in the middle. You can't just focus in on one of those guys. Like double teaming, I look all across this defensive line. You look at Jordan Birch, how good he was last year. Mateo Uwiyangalele is expected to take a big jump up on the edges as well. Like I look across this defensive line and I say, if you double team somebody, someone else is going to wreak havoc. The depth of talent, I am going to hammer that point home about Oregon all off season long. It's great to just have talent in spots, but when you got talent all over the place and you've got deep talent, that's when you go from a great football team to a championship level football team. And when you look at the depth of talent within this defensive line room, it doesn't stop with just these four. You look at Keon Ware Hudson and Amari Washington is the name to keep an eye on to take a big step forward in this rotation. Like look at Michigan last season. They had really good players up front, Mason Graham and Chris Jenkins, but they also had a lot of depth to rotate in, keeping those great players fresh. Oregon is certainly playing the part of a Big Ten contender because if you look at some of the other Big Ten contenders, they have the best defensive lines not only in this conference but in all of college football. The Big Ten is stacked. 
They are loaded with some of the best defensive linemen and defensive fronts in the entire country. It's no coincidence that the best teams in the Big Ten that are in contention to win the Big Ten title in 2024 have the best defensive lines. When you look at the contenders that Oregon has to maybe be the best D line in the conference, you look at Ohio State, you look at Penn State, and you look at Michigan, all of which have at least two returning all-conference players on their defensive front. Let's start first with Ohio State. They have three returners that were all conference last year. Of course, JT, Tui Moluau, Jack Sawyer, Tylik Williams in the middle. Penn State has two. Abdul Carter was an all conference linebacker. He's put on some weight. He's coming off the edge. He's going to pack some pop off of there with Dan Dennis Sutton on the other side as well. Michigan may be as good as it gets on the interior of the defensive line with Mason Graham, who's projected to be a, projected to be a 2025 first round NFL draft pick, and Kenneth Grant as well. Oregon is a top three defensive line. I think they eclipse Penn State, and I think that they're in the discussion with Ohio State and with Michigan. Personally, I believe, man, and these are tough choices, Ohio State, Michigan, and Oregon. Personally, I believe Michigan to probably be the best defensive line in the Big Ten. Okay, when you look at the interior, they probably have the best interior. Mason Graham and Kenneth Grant, who I mentioned before. And then when you look to the edges, Derek Moore and Josiah Stewart that were able to both put up pretty good sack numbers and TFL numbers last season, it's depth at Michigan. The thing about their defensive front last year is you saw a lot of guys get in the mix. You saw a lot of fresh bodies. And now maybe some of those twos are stepping up into some of those one roles. Coming off the edge... In the interior, I believe Michigan maybe has the most complete defensive front in this conference. Ohio State, though, is not far behind. We know how much havoc JTT and Jack Sawyer can certainly wreak. They were in the mix for Derek Harmon, which I think goes to show where they exactly thought their defensive front was. That say, hey, they could maybe get a little bit better. But Hamilton and Williams up the middle, yeah, that's still pretty good. They're still really good. Although Ohio State may be a little bit of a notch below Michigan, they might be 1B. You throw Oregon in there and the Ducks, the Buckeyes, and the Wolverines might be A, B, and C. I'm not sure how much of a difference there is when you separate all three of those. Let's jump into some fan reaction from YouTube and Twitter. This first from Stan Lanning over there on Twitter. Oregon is building downright scary talent and depth that every defensive position going into this season. Think 2021-2022 Georgia as a comparison. They are joining the Big Ten swinging and they just may take over the conference crown in year number one. 2021 Georgia. Dan Lanning was the defensive coordinator of that team. One of the best defenses in recent memory in college football. It's no mistake that Dan Lanning has built Oregon the way he has because he knows what it takes. He was there in the room. He was leading that defense in 2021 at Georgia. It is no mistake. It is no coincidence that Oregon is building the team the way they are right now. From our guy, Doug Scott, co-host over at the QB11 show, he goes, I mean, certainly it's Ohio State and Oregon, one and two in whatever order. Oregon is also not done yet, adding to its transfer class on defense, Ducks and Bucks, both going all in on 2024. As I said, I think you got to throw Michigan in that discussion as well. But I think those three teams, Michigan, Ohio State, and Oregon, have separated themselves in a tier as far as the defensive line goes. And that is a great thing for Oregon. When you can step into a conference, year one, when you're going from the pack to a physical conference like the Big Ten, and you can match their physicality up front, It certainly says a lot for your future, and we all got our eyes on October 12th. This from Swaring MJ on YouTube kind of brings up a good point. A little bit of foreshadowing maybe in the last couple of days. No wonder Ben Roberts transferred yesterday. That room is getting 
crowded. Crowded equals depth. Depth equals rotation. Rotation equals freshness for some of your best defensive players. I think Ben Roberts can be an impact player elsewhere. Maybe USC could be a place for Roberts to make an impact and be on the defensive line next to Bear Alexander. Let's rattle off some insight from some other YouTube comments where they think Oregon stands in the Big Ten as far as defensive front. Here from Shine13373, I'm biased, but I'm going with 1A and Ohio State being 1B. Once again, Bucks and Ducks. There's a reason maybe why those two teams are favored to be in the spot, maybe in the Big Ten championship, and it's all going to be worked out on October 12th. From what LOL underscore E, as a Duck fan, I'd say number three or number four. Oregon had the number 15 defense last year, and that's good considering Oregon's history with defense. But before I put Oregon in the one or two spots, I want to see the defense actually play. So number three or number four, one through three, Michigan, Ohio State, and Oregon may very well be interchangeable. I think we're going to find out pretty early on in this season just how good Oregon is. So you want to see them play? Okay, they might be shutting down some teams fairly early in their schedule. Here from T.22916, I'd say probably about one to two undoubtedly. Maybe I'm a little bit biased. But 100% Oregon's defense overall would be top three in the Big Ten. I certainly agree with that. There's going to be some really good defenses in the Big Ten Conference this season. Like, there's going to be good defenses that are going to be in the middle of the pack in the Big Ten because you have the country's best defenses at the top. You have a Michigan, an Ohio State, an Oregon, a Penn State. Teams like that taking up most of your top five that are probably going to be top 15 to top 20 defenses, all of them, in the country next season. There are certain boxes that needs to be checked when you talk about a championship level football team. Oregon is starting to check a lot of those boxes. I want to hear your thoughts. Do you think Oregon is the best defensive line in the Big Ten? Or do you think Michigan, Penn State, Ohio State, Nebraska, are they in the mix? How do they compare to the Oregon Ducks? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. I'm Big Ten Ted. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching Big Ten Ted, where it's all Big Ten all year long. Make sure to like the video to spread the word of Big Ten Ted to the masses and subscribe to the channel for updates on Big Ten content that drops every day.